Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our session today. Uh, we are building smarter. We are talking about building smarter, secure, and effective collaboration with Microsoft Teams, Power Platform, and Azure AI. Uh, glad you make it. Um, we we'll start with a quick code of conduct. Um, and again, this uh, sessions are recorded. So yeah, please be mindful of our uh, act. Um, this is just an you know, our presenters, aside uh, from our organizers. Um, now, quickly about me. So, I Ashish Pari. I have been in the business industry for like 14, 15 years now. I am. I love tech to the core of it. I love to code and build solutions. I'm an enthusiast on building, cutting or I say cutting edge solutions, but not really. They are already there. Uh, but yes, that's what I do. I love to build solutions and I you know conceptualize the business problems around it and solve them. I've been working on Microsoft 365, Azure AI, and lot many of those things for the last uh, six, seven, eight years now. Uh, what I normally would say is, um, you know, you need to dream it, believe it, and then build it. If you guys are doing all three of that, you're a happy person. Cool. Uh, so before we jump into this, uh, you know, AI stuff and a little bit knowing what it does day, let's understand how the smart collaboration will come in picture into our day-to-day -day life. And considering that we are working remotely in this environment, it's really important that we collaborate a lot. So the first thing effectively in that part is the working togetherness. So we all work together. We all work on, uh, you know, day in, day out with our colleagues. So we need to find a better ways to improve. And that's where smarter collaboration could really help. And that's the first thing about that bit is identifying things that you can do together and faster. So it's not about just doing things faster, but it's about doing things together and faster. So collaboration is actually more effective if you work together, right? So try to find things that you can do together and faster. And this is the mindset that you need to start building up. Now, as you are starting doing that, the other thing that you need to start thinking about, if I am going to do, build faster, is it going to really improve something? So one of the key points that you need to start thinking about is how do you decrease redundancy in your work life or for your colleagues? Um, in in day in day to day work that you current consistently do. So how do you go about reducing redundancy uh, in your working and the processes that you do? At the same time, also from an administration point of view or people who are actually owning these environments and managing it, they can start thinking about how do they decrease their administration overhead? Are they going to bring something in for the company and the team that can help them improve their processes, bring more effectiveness to the people as they're working remotely or working through um, you know day-to-day -day, um, working and collaborating stuff. How do they go about improving? Now, Teams is obviously our point of discussion, but that can be implemented across other platforms. Uh, but Teams being the focus area bit and a lot of people spending time, at least in this uh, time or situation, it's really important that we start thinking about these two improvements. Uh, now, obviously, you know, you are trying to collaborate, you're thinking of ways to improve, but, you know, not everything is quite easy if you're just thinking about doing those bits without building in some kind of smartness into your systems. Now, smartness doesn't necessarily need to be AI driven or, you know, kind of solution driven. It could be anything, but currently, uh, today we are going to talk about a few of the smart integration points that you can start as, as your start of the journey, where you can build in connections to other systems, bring them together and start working in a collaborative fashion. And then at the same time, start building smart applications of how do you go about building smart applications in your day-to-day -day business model or working model that will help your business improve on it. So I suppose these are the three key things that you may start thinking about. How do you collaborate? How do you improve? And how do you do this smartly? Now, all of this, we obviously get, get it, but how do we do it? Now, obviously, if you are serving of uh, 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 Big Bang Theory, you can always go and, uh, you know, I just forgot the stone name, but you can always go and, you know, kind of you know, telepath it. But if you are talking about normally, how do we start with that approach? So first of all, we need to have a business process understanding of what we are trying to do and improve. So it needs to be something that you actually understand core. Um, it doesn't need to be that you need to be working on it, but you need to understand the process end to end so you know how you can build that system into it. And then at the same time with AI, and we'll look at a few bits of how AI works, there's a lot of data needs to be there. So you need to have data that you can train the AI on and build that kind of smartness into the uh, system so that you can 
Yeah, well, the thing is the AI will work on this data to bring the smartness into this. So you need a lot of data to work with. And then at the at the same time, you need a model. So just the data and the solution will not solve the problem. It's also about the model that will actually kind of link them together. So this is the kind of a pseudo algorithm or algorithm that it runs in the back end, which actually matches new data as it comes in. And we look at the process. And finally, you need the AI. Okay, so we're not saying again the smartness needs to be done through AI, but AI will actually help you improve on that so you don't have to go and build every bit into that application or solution. And that's one of the challenges that business run that if I build something, I start owning it, I start um, you know, changing it, and then it just becomes a repetitive cycle and you keep owning and changing. Where with AI, you can say that, okay, the intelligence can take some part of it, and then the rest of it you are doing is just the functionality, which is like, you know, simple stuff. And we'll see in some of the demos. Cool. Now, what are the smart collaboration tools that we have in today's world? The first to start with, uh, and again, in Office 365 environment and talking about Teams, uh, correlated power platform. That's the first point I would say to start the journey with so that you can actually get an understanding and easy uh, build process with a no-code, low-code platform, which can give you business value very um, you know, easily and uh, soon. Then the next part is extensions. Now, Power Platform is obviously a no-code, low-code solutions. Then you can actually do extensions, which is Microsoft Team messaging extensions, which allow you to build that one-click experience in Teams where people can go ahead and click on a command kind of experience and just do something. And we'll look at some of those examples. The first part is obviously Power Platform, which is the core solution, but then also you can use extension, which could be Power Platform or not Power Platform, could be a power custom app, but it could be a click experience where users can just go and click on it. Then the next part is obviously more conversational experience where users can talk to a bot uh, to give a conversational kind of feeling at the end of it. So you can have a conversational companion like a bot at the end and that can actually talk to you back and forth. And then finally, when you are actually having a more enterprise required uh, solution, virtual assistants can actually help you to become like a organizational level implemented companion, enterprise companion in one sense, which can actually go and sit there and actually help answering questions, doing a little bit of magic around how to get data out without a lot of the build requirements that you would go about doing it. And now in today's system, we will not get a chance to look at virtual assistants in deep, but I'll touch of some of the points and I might show something that you guys can look at and go back and then, so tomorrow I have a session with Reactor uh, Sydney where I'm talking more about a hands-on experience with virtual assistants. Please feel to join it if you are interested. But today in this session, we'll just look at high-level concepts and some high-level examples of virtual assistants. Cool, now let's talk about AI and how does AI work and how does it actually you start with building AI. And this is a conceptual model that needs to be understood. Um, to start with, AI works with a model. So that's the core of it. So you actually have a programming model that act, defines what the AI will work around. I think it's like the brain, oh, well, not necessarily the brain, but the actual concept of what AI does. Um, so this is like the core thing that actually governs how the data comes in, gets understood by the AI engine, and then what it outputs as a result to you. So you start with the training exercise. That's the first bit where you start training the AI and then making sure that it understands what kind of data mapping you have, what kind of data uh, schemas are coming through so it can train on them and understand them. And at the same time, it actually matches your model to match with your data. Once it has done that, then obviously you know that, okay, my AI is there. It's almost ready to take in new data in, and then you start testing it. So testing is really important because you want to make sure that whatever you have trained the AI on or the model on, it's actually doing the right thing. Uh, what you expect out of it. Um, then the next part is implement. So now you have trained, you have tested. Once you have done that, you go about implementing that AI through a platform or solution like Power Platform, Teams, Board Builder, or something like that. So you go and implement that solution into your collaboration platform. And as you implement it, that's not the end of it. You might say that, okay, I went ahead and implemented something. Is it? it? Is that it? Um, and then what's the difference from a solution? But no, AIs are powerful enough to train themselves from the data that they get in. So they go and eventually become more and more smarter day by day. So these are the three core things that we need to understand, train, test, implement, when we start doing any AI bit. 
Now, before I start jumping into more details, I'll just leave this um, uh, quick QR code competition um, that you guys can register, take a picture of it, or you can see in the video later. Uh, but yeah, with this, you can just uh, uh, not register for the draw for this week. Cool. Now, without further ado, we'll start with understanding those platforms, the collaboration tools, and what they can do for us. Now, to start with, as I said, Plow Platform is the start of your journey. And this is where you can actually have a quicker business turnaround with a no code, low code solution model uh, where you don't have to code a lot or spend a lot in building something. So the first thing is Microsoft has gone ahead and built AI into it with the AI builder uh, concept. So you can have a AI building mechanism which can go and train the models. It can actually understand it. So they built a quite snippet AI uh, interface into your power platform so you can train them. The next part is the virtual agents, which is like the same conversational experience that you get with bots, but bots are more tech heavy. So virtual agents are like um, like a flow chart based. So you can just have like a back and forth questionnaire that you want and we look at virtual agents where you can link them together. So it's like a like a designer, uh, it's called as authoring canvas. And then finally to link them all together. So AI Builder obviously build the model, virtual agents are doing the conversation. You can have Power Automate at the back to integrate all of them. Like if you have to send data outside or if you have to do some intelligence work, which is not a AI driven thing, you can actually do Power Automate. And in Power Apps, obviously you have other uh, ways of doing it through APIs and everything. And same with Power Automate, you can build APIs to it. So. Let's jump on to our demo and look at Power Platform. So cool, so this is my Power Platform. Um, this is the AI Builder that Microsoft gives us. Now the first step of the process is to build, which is the modeling bit. So you have to first create the model uh, that you want to work through it. Um, but you know what, before I jump into this, uh, let me show you guys a little bit of the output that you will get as part of this. So there are, two aspects of it. One is, um, this scenario is like you have a uh, product company who does um, like a selling concept where you have sales and each sells and actually gets some importance based on how you place the product. So if you guys have gone to Woolsworth and Coase and you guys have figured why some products are on the top, why something are in the middle, uh, I can tell you that they actually pay for that spot. And there is a science that runs around how do you detect where your product is and how do you make it more important. Um, so there is a little bit of it, but if you want to build some AI where you take, a, like your uh, you know analyzer has went to the spots, take a picture of it, and you want to analyze where your products are placed and how that gets attention, you can actually build an object detection. For this example, I'm taking out of the box example of Teeth, where you can have an app called Detect Me, for example, uh, which is a power app built into Teams. And I can have this button, which is like detect my T. I just go ahead and uh, select an example T that I want to bring in. So I will just select one example. And what it does is it looks at the picture, understands it, and tries to categorize them into these three categories, which is like T rose, T cinnamon, T mint. So if you guys look at it, it has gone and identified really smartly that this green one is a mint one. This um, this is the rose one. I, I suppose I cannot zoom. So, so you guys actually is doing the right thing, but it is doing the right thing, believe me. Um, so it has the rose identified, the mint and the cinnamon. And I have a table in the down, which obviously in this case is quite easy to count, but suppose we had like 50 odd products stick together. It's easy to identify which one are yours and how many quantities are there. So this is a quick scenario where you can do like a solving uh, mechanism to understand how priority your products are and where they are. Um, now this is all in Teams, so I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to quit. This is a Power Apps embedded into Teams, so you can just go and do it from here. The other thing is, which could be more relevant to every other business, every business has a finance team and the finance team actually goes and processes a lot of invoices by the end of fiscal year or end of every month. So they have this whole closeout and they do a lot of, you know, kind of processing within it. So at the same time, while you are doing it, uh, what you might be interested in knowing is 
if I have to look at an invoice and I want to easily know how much somebody is paying, now you obviously have done the calculations and you have sent out the report and the invoices are current, but somebody came back and said, hey, I want that invoice. I was actually looking for this number, but I got this new number. How do I go about making sure that, that I'm right? So I, there is another app like Analyze My Invoice. I can go and click Analyze button. I'll go and click an example. Again, this is out of the box example. You guys can go and try it yourself. But what you can do is I can give it an invoice and what it will do is it will understand that invoice. Give me a from person, give me a to person and how much of balance will do. So as you guys can see, this is like from Pink Tip Toys to Prosper Inc. And this was the balance due. So if there was a question, I don't have to go and search through multiple set of data and then match. And obviously in this case, it's quite easy. You can even look at the file and do it, but you can do a most smarter way when like you can take out GSTs or do something smart. But this is a quick example of where you can use AI to read a file and bring the data out of it. So these are two scenarios that uh, we will look at today. And like one is the image scenario and then is a file scenario. So if I go back to my power apps, as I was talking, so one is object detection, where we are detecting a particular component in the image or a picture, and you are trying to detect the object in it. Uh, and there are examples. This is the same example I built as I showed you guys. So this is uh, just a scenario. So if I say that I want to create a test uh, detection model, so I just need to give the name first. And then when I click create, it will actually give me a set of steps that I need to go through to create that model. Uh, and the, some of the step is uh, getting the schema right, getting the object um, that you want to train on, and then finally defining which images are what. So the first step is obviously, as I was giving an example, for in this case, say there are objects on the cells and you want to detect which objects are what and which layer of importance they are in. So this is the same example. But for us, what we will do is we'll go and click next. So we are not going to choose what there are uh, as an example, but we are going to keep our own. So we can just go and add a new object also. So I can just say, uh, this is my product name or you know, product, for example. And then I have uh, some brand. So I can just keep add those objects that I want to tag those images on. So I just add that and then next, I can go and add those images. So Microsoft says minimum 15, but you can have uh, more than 15. So you start with minimum 15 to uh, detect and trade on. So you just go ahead and select all the images at once and you click upload. So it's uploading like 30 images in this case. Um, it will not take too much time. This uploads very quickly. So, yep, done that. So now it has uploaded. So I've added my test data, train data. So I'm training the data on this. Now I see those images here. What I have to do is open each of the image, point to the section that I'm going to tag on, and then put like what I'm tagging it on. So it automatically also detects, if you see. So it gone and detects that this is actually what I'm looking for. And then I can say another one, which is like, um, Suppose I just consider it tricky, and I can say the brand is here. So this is the product, and this is the brand. And the product, I need to give proper names. It cannot be product. It needs to be the name of the product, and this could be the brand name that you're trying to. So it doesn't need to be generic. It, does, it cannot be generic. It needs to be the actual product name. That I gave it product because I didn't have a product name in mind, but in this case, for example, this would be Green Tea Mint, or this would be Contoso, actually. The product would be Contoso and the brand should be green team. So you have to go and tag all the other images, and then once it is tagged, it will start learning them, and better to get a lot of examples in, so that you can show that variance happening. So it's like in this case, there is this uh, like pouch with food in it, and you are not tagging it. So if there is something else you are giving as an example to the uh, AI later, which has something else on the background, it will ignore that. So you need to train with as much as possible of like real-time examples that you are looking at. So once you have done all the 30 images, now if at the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. Once you have done that, you will go and train your model and it will be ready. So I'm going to go back and show one which I've already done. Okay. So if I look at my models, I have a model for T-detection. 
Now, obviously, this is falsely saying 100% because obviously, you know, I have done all the tagging and this is not right. It's a test data, so you can just use the model or you can quickly test it. Um, but what will happen is based on your training that you have given, like for example, 100 of objects, it will train them and come up with a probabilistic figure of like 99 or 98 or something like that. And if you are happy with that, you can use this model and you can use it in Power Apps or Power Automate. Now, this is the model part of it. Uh, you have trained and tested and get it ready. Now, to use it, we'll go to the app. So I'll show you guys the Power App that I have here. Um, obviously, not in the view mode, but in edit mode. You have a particular location there where you can do and drag and drop. And that's how you can use AI into your Power Apps. So, Yep, hopefully it is fast. So this is the Power App loading on my end, and this is the app that I've built. So if you look at here, what I've done is I put a canvas, I put a card, um, not this one, that's my start page. But if I go here into my data card, I have this control, which is object detector. And this is nothing but a control that I inserted from here, insert AI filter, Obviously you need premium, so you need to be P1 or P2, or sorry, not P1, P2, but I think your user per user app or per apps license so that you can start using it. You get 30 day free trial and it is user based. So if anybody in your company wants to try it, just go ahead and uh, get the trial and try it. So you can get this object detector, put it onto the uh, power app and that's it. And you give it a model that you want it to, you know, use the AI model that you have built. And that's it, that's, that's up and going. So it's easy. Uh, be uh, easy way of implementing a kind of intelligence into your systems, uh, sorry, intelligence into your apps without actually going and building all the code. Now we have looked at the, obviously the, uh, the app part of it, uh, but what about the chat experience? So this is the power virtual agent, which allows to get a chat experience onto your, uh, you know, into your, uh, into your uh, team's environment. So for example, if I go here, I have this order app, which actually does, kind of an ordering mechanism where I can just say, hey, are there any stores in this area? Hopefully it will go and understand that I'm asking that question um, and then it will go and, obviously there is a, a linguistic AI in the back of it which understands um, and it, see, it understood that I'm asking for stores in this area it gave me a sort of options and it could be database or Power Automate can bring the data out from your databases. And then you can just select which area you want to know the details on. So you say Ale Alexandria and it says that, hey, this is our company store, um, you know, and this is the address. Now, the beauty of it is also asking you, did you find the answer to your question? If I say no, then what it will do is it will go and prompt like, hey, okay, I didn't answer your question then. Um, do you want to talk to someone or do you want to see? So it will give you those options. You can say, talk to an agent or rephrase and it will go and start again. Um, at the same time, for example, there is a buying scenario where I bought a product and there is a flow for this, but I will not have time to show it. I want to just proceed to checkout where I want to just finish the product ordering and this could be your internal, you know, internal market, uh, internal kind of uh, sale thing, uh, not with external vendors. Uh, but you know, if you are doing something internal ordering, you can have that and you can say proceed to checkout. It will show your inventory list. You want to say proceed to checkout, I will say yes. And what it does is, as an as a integration scenario, I will show you, it will go and put a message out in that finance team's uh, channel, which will say that, hey, a product has been ordered. So you can see here, there's a message that came up, which says that, hey, a product has been confirmed. And so people, somebody has ordered, the finance team gets a notification that the order had happened. And if you go to your uh, Outlook, which, I'm, which I don't have it open, sadly, but I will get a message uh, in Outlook, which will say that, hey, a product has been placed and this is the cost for it, so go and invoice them. Um, okay, so I'm locked in. Uh, but yeah, so it, it says that the order has been confirmed and it will tell you that somebody has ordered it, this is the cost, and go and inventory, process it, and invoice it also. So yeah, so there you go. So this is how your virtual agent can integrate with your platforms. And how does it do it? Is if you come to virtual agent, there's something called as topics. 
and in the topics now you can just say that okay these are the topics that i want to users to talk on so for example i have a checkout topic i'll show you the checkout topic this is not part of the out of the box example i built this so again it's not that difficult you can do it yourself so looking at the checkout topic i have given a set of trigger phases that it can look at and understand that this is what they want to do then i have a power automate um, well this is the process checkout experience once you have confirmed i have a power automate which goes ahead and sends out the email so if i look at that flow of power automate um open it then basically if you guys will see there is this uh, email notification that is going around and i have sent us the email to set the amount of people and i put those data that i got from agent the power virtual agent uh, into the email and i can post a message on to teams so it's quite simple you just need to build the flow in power virtual agent and then integrate with power automate to go ahead and do that additional bit of uh, integration to other systems so it's quite easy you can use the authoring converse to actually have a lot of steps so you can have messages you can add a condition you can call for an action uh, so all those stuff and then you can have entities where you define what kind of data you want to capture and you can then publish to a channel so if you go to publish there are a set of options um also publish not sorry you go to channels and there are set of options so you have to select teams team is not by default enabled so you have to select teams and you have to generate an app id and then create an app in teams and then join power app power virtual agent to it and then you can also have authentication scenarios and you can extend your uh, power virtual agent with skills now skills are nothing but individual operations that you want the power virtual agent to do which are not normally like a flow chart based and you want to do more custom operations with it so overall what we have looked at now is a quick way of using power platform to build ai solutions now some of the use cases that i talked through during the demo but some of the other cases that you want to look at is you want to provide ownership back to the business who can own and build those ai very easily you don't want to code and manage them uh, provided you are a tech uh, you know the, the it part of it but if you're a business you can just pretty much own that and build it uh, you can focus on the business equipment then the technical know how and it is flexible control for our user and permissions so you can have user and permissions around it and then scenarios so you can have finance reporting inventory assessment booking and planning kind of scenarios that you can build with power platform so this one one aspect of the solution um, then we look at extensions so extensions are uh, have, having a quick reach so these are more custom code could be uh, this could be more custom code and not just uh, power platform based solutions uh, you can have a uh, code that is in work from the chat and i will show you on the chat uh, conversation uh, you can search for information so if you want to search for details and it could be commands driven so you can have commands and then people click on that command so extensions allow you to build that experience where they don't have to actually type everything they can have a click button experience but then you come to the bots which is more custom code and more heavy more uh, you know more really, more kind of uh, extensible in that sense so you can have as or um because that's the backend of the bots you can have azure ai which can actually do a lot of bits q and a maker and all the stuff and you can look at more of that into more sessions virtual agents uh but when you look at bots you are looking at a specific business requirement that you are trying to build you are looking at a conversational flow basically it needs to have a flow in mind of what is nothing but a person or a, a human interface kind of system which is on the back which does back and forth conversation with you so it just you know just to act like an agent in between so there should be a conversational flow with it and then it could be text and file based though. so you can have a file given to it and it will analyze the data for you so let's go ahead and look at some of the demos for bots now what i'm going to show you today is not something that you know it's a full fledged solution i actually have split that solution into two parts so i guess so you guys the capability of it but apparently the requirement was in one case what people are doing activities on teams and everything uh, and we want users to go ahead and then start responding and asking uh, putting feedback on their experience so if i have a custom app deployed uh, once the custom app work has been done i want to, to send out a notification to users that they can go ahead and you know uh, feed uh, their experience now in this scenario i'm not the end to end solution what i'm going to show you in two bits is first bit is where you can have a proactive message and then you can have some feedback taken through a task module and then the other one 
is the messaging system where it can just push the messages out. So to look at that, as soon as this will go. So we look at that. Uh, let's go to our teams. And what we will do is uh, we'll go and look at our um, to start with. Let's look at our task module. Uh, it's not here. It's another one. Ah, come on. Don't. Thank you. Um, so go to the order app. Let's go to order app. And no, this is my virtual agent. I'm looking for that. I'm looking for my task module. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke the task module by saying something because it's not proactive right now. So I'm going to invoke it. And what it will give me is a prompt with some feedback buttons like here. So I can just go and set some or a meeting feedback. And what it will do is quickly bring up a kind of a, like a kind of a form, like a dummy form. And that you can, so there you go. So you can just say what feedback it is and what ratings. I can just say test and rating is three. And very rudimentary, I've not done too much effort in building it. I still don't have time to build it. Uh, so what I've done is I've thrown the JSON out. And basically what I've done is I've got the feedback out and I've got the rating. And once you have the JSON, you can go and read the JSON and do other bits with it. So that is the uh, option where actually you can have a task module form that comes up as a part of your pod when you invoke it. The other part is um, where we are saying about invoking that um, kind of experience of proactiveness. So if I go here, I have my body bot and I'll go to one of my channels. Um, so general channel and I can say body bot. I'll mention it. Body bot. Uh, and still have some commands. I can give some command a command. I need it, you to mention me. So I will just say mention me. And when it does that, it will you guys will see it will come with a reply and it's my name. So basically, I said mention me, but it understands who am I, and it says, "Hello, how are you?" or something like that. I can also go and message all members with this. So I can just say, "Body bot," and if I don't remember what command I have to give, I can just give it something, and it will come up with a set of options, bottom, which will be like, "Okay, there you go." Um, update card or message all members. I can click this button, which is the proactive part of it. And when I click on it, it will just go and message all the members. Um, and I will get a message very soon from the board saying that, um, uh, where is my message? Right here. Uh, there you go. Uh, it just messaged everyone. So not only this person, but also it will message Megan, who is a part of the team, and then send a message out. So you can actually build a scenario where you can put a text message with it and say, okay, message all the users. And it will go and message all the users. So this kind of scenario can be built in the bot. The bot can act as command line tools or something similar and then work around that particular process that you want to work with. At the same time, I want to look, open up that extension experience. So you can have a GitHub extension, for example. And now I'm a tech guy. I work on a lot of open source projects, but I don't have time to go about and looking at you know each one of them now. What you can do is you can actually have a GitHub um, extension that you can install and basically it will bring all your PRs that you're working on, all the issues that you're working on and actually goes in and lets you work on it or act on it directly. Now this is mostly the GitHub Enterprise experience for our organization, but if you're individual and you want to work on something similar, you can do that. Set aside, you can also have Azure Dev DevOps. You can also have integration with Azure DevOps where I have included this with Azure DevOps. I can go and search for a task item. So I can say, okay, my uh, I'm working on this task item, not to recall what it is. I want to go and search for it. I can go and search for the task item, so it will bring up that task too. And I can just say, hey, uh, for example, the user, how is it going? So as you guys can see, this is, um, you know, this is like a quick experience, not command driven. Users don't have to remember anything. They just click on a button, open up the form, look at it. Um, you know, do something so you can search for items. You can click on an item and do something. You can also add mention it. So you can say add, um, like for example, add uh, Azure DevOps, uh, and then it will give a set of like search work items, and I can say task. So it will go and search for, it, and it will bring the task, and then you can put it. So you can build that cross experience with your in your conversation itself. 
where actually your messaging extensions can do a lot of it. And I suppose the most common one which people normally use is this praise function. So you can just go and praise people for the work they have done. Gives a little bit of a kind of a visual to it and you appreciate people day in, day out. Or you can have this experience also where you can create a poll. So you can create a forms poll and you can say, how how is the team doing today? And then you can say, good, nice. And you can say too much work. Just too bad. Uh, and you can say you can actually have multiple answers for that. It's good, but too much work. So yeah, so you can just do a poll, and it will send out a poll, and then uh, you know it just puts the poll out. But oh, these scenarios are more out of the box. These apps are already existing. I didn't have time to build a messaging extension for this uh, uh, session, but saying that you guys can actually uh, extend any of these um, things that you are doing. Uh, in your other um, boards or everything, and then put it as an extension. Uh, there's just a little bit of change in your code for that. Cool. So we looked at the board scenario. We looked at um, some part of the messaging extension that you can invoke with, and how do you go about using it in a practical day to day is obviously up to you guys. But I would um, some examples here. So. Some of the examples or some of the scenarios that you could be thinking about is replicating a human-centered experience. So for example, service test is a good starting point where you have people coming into your service test. They are quite swamped with a lot of people coming in. You can actually have a thought that does a little bit of that service experience on the back, and you can give that same feeling that they are actually talking to a person. They don't need to know it's a bot, right? And you can give a fun key name for it. Um, let's say a service test bot. That's pretty formal. But yeah, so something like that. You can extend and automate your business processes. So for example, as I showed you, you can connect to Azure DevOps. You can actually have a lot of stuff that you're running with, but this is not only restricted to technical stuff, but any other business systems that you work with where you want to build an integration point and the bot is your middle layer, which actually gives that human experience out. So basically, for example, in the invoicing system scenario, your data is there in the ERP system. You want to build the data out. Uh, users are like the finance team is pretty much swamped and they don't have time to go and look at all the records or run a query. And mostly they will have all of that. But how about a board experience where they can say, can you send me a report of all the invoices that were paid two weeks ago? And that's it. They send that query out and you actually generate a report and give it back to them. And the other thing that you want to also think about is can work on multiple systems and applications. So the board, obviously I'm showing today is on Teams, but bots can be web-based, but bots can be other channel space, so you can have the bots running on multiple channels. Or if you have a bot that is not even Office 365, or sorry, Azure build, you can actually have a channel registration and build the bot into your environment. So there are a lot of scenarios that you can start thinking about. Uh, yeah, so some of the scenarios I already talked about, service test, knowledge base is a good one. So there's so much data in some organizations that it's very hard to find out. So you can have a knowledge based scenario of a bot where the bot can actually look up a knowledge base and answer those questions. You can have automatic tracking scenarios where you can actually track uh, stuff and then you know detect. Uh, one common example was, uh, I think I was doing a demo a uh, few months ago where we had this example of uh, a like a e-commerce, like something you have ordered from Amazon and Amazon has this bot that is built in where you can ask the bot something and it tell you where the product is. Now this is quite a cool scenario, but in a more of a product e-commerce scenario. But same thing can happen with anything, right? Like for example, if you are in an organization and you have ordered a software, how many times you have spent time talking to a service desk person just to know what the status of your software uh, that you have uh, requested for? You can have a bot then doing that tracking for you and it will just tell you, hey, your product has processed to gate three. It's now ordered, so something like that. On top of it, you can have smart forms and workflows that you can build. So you can have something like, as I said, is a task module, which can do a lot of this um, kind of scenarios where people can go and fill in the forms. Um, like I showed an example of meeting feedback, but could be something else. And proactive messages come in and they just work on it. Or you can have a workflow where you can just go ahead and you know have step-by-step -step process, people coming in, uh, doing a automated process with Power Automate. Uh, as I showed you, the proceed checkout scenario. So you can have something similar where you can have a workflow triggered as a part of your bot process, and the process does that everything. Uh, one of the uh, one of the projects that we have worked on is the leave in uh, leave request. So um, that was an easy bot scenario where you can say, that I, "I'm applying for leave for this to this." Please, obviously, not applying it really because every system has their own requirements. But 
the thing was they could just check how much balance is left or they can say if that period is available or not or something or they forgot what leaves they have applied so those kind of scenarios where you can have a smart form and a workflow built into your system cool now i just want to leave you guys with the understanding of virtual assistants now virtual assistants are a step further than your pods and they give you more practical experience of a full fledged enterprise uh, assistant scenario where you have a virtual assistant sitting there doing the work for the company answering questions doing a lot of stuff actually uh, think it like a ea personalized ea for you so and you don't need to be a executive for that think about it so so virtual assistant is nothing but an enterprise integrated bot which actually allows to integrate a lot of uh, like bot functionalities together so it's an integrated bot in one sense it is extensible with skills so you can actually have multiple bot scenarios like for example the meeting feedback the order app all those different ones which the users can have to remember or thousands of apps you can actually create one virtual assistant and do all that work uh, through skills so you can have five skills that actually uh, connect to your virtual assistant and that can do the work for you then you have a business model around it so because it's so heavy because you have so much stuff besides the cost that you have to pay for it um then it's quite quite a lot but uh, you know and you can listen to me more for that but yeah, the, the thing is if you have a business model that works with it that makes sense to for that cost and that complexity of it around it so you need to have a business model that is required around what you are trying to do it cannot be something just fluke like it's not a small thing it's a big thing so you need to start thinking about it now to stress that point this is just the design diagram from microsoft which tells you how many moving components are there or how many interaction points are there so you can have channels which can be teams direct line um slack sky facebook a lot of channels you can have inputs which could be a tab which could type speak adaptive cards you can have oh sorry i'm trying to scroll through the picture uh you can have devices so you can have a iot kind of scenario which you're working through then you have the middle bot framework which does your virtual assistant bit so all the data can come through the channel from the input from the devices fed to your virtual assistant and then virtual assistant goes and looks up your knowledge base or third party uh, systems or you know assistants but this could be assistants or systems even and then uses the skill to actually get that particular output that your user is looking for so it comes from multiple endpoints it can be processed through multiple endpoints and then comes to the bot which actually does all the collation together now there are a lot of things that move around it so again uh, you can listen more um this is a simple wired flow for it but you know you can listen more to it how does it happen really so let's define what the knowledge sources are so you can have the knowledge sources you can have the channels let's the inputs and the skills so you have to define all of that and build a virtual assistant with a qn and make a custom skills something like that and then you deploy it to azure or a channel or a hosting so there are three stages that you go through when building a virtual assistant not only virtual assistant but basically every bot that you think about you have to define you have to build and you have to deploy uh, in some cases it could be one step or the other missing but uh, that's normally what you do if you are going to build something so some of the cases are cumulative bot experience uh you can have a conversation assistant across broad range of applications you can have a experience personalized to your users and brand so you can just have something built for your organization so some of the scenarios are self paced assistant organization bot help desk busy speech and voice and all kind of stuff so you can just talk through instead of typing cool now obviously all that bit all the smartness around it the collaboration i think the one thing that throws them off is how much security we need how can how we can secure all of this so obviously no collaboration is good enough if you are not secure right so um security is key so the few of the things that you we can touch base on security is in the teams platform you can have security based on the apps uh, that you are trying to deploy so you can have app permission policies that can define which bot you are trying to deploy to who and you can control that you can control permissions of who can install and you can use the same id and secret so for example they these all can use one common policy that can be used by other um, you know systems and then you can have that uh, id and secret in your azure ad yeah. so it gives you a single point of entry and then you can manage all of that together it is not disposing your um, uh, your resources and workloads 
The other thing is that authentication. Now that's obviously the infrastructure side where you can control who can do what. But once it comes to individual application or systems, you need to have something to authenticate that it is the right user or it is the right thing that you are trying to use. So Azure AD apps is obviously the starting point. So you can have a MS graph, uh, API permission with it, Azure AD app uh, with a secret and you know, authentication around it. You can have OAuth connection settings in the box. So for example, if you have an Outlook skill or something like that, which needs to authenticate the user, you can have a OAuth setting in your board, which actually authenticates that user, so not anybody else can use it. And then basically you can have other settings that allows you to control that. That's the part, part of it. Then you have Power Platform. So in Power Platform, you can have environment level permissions to differentiate user roles in the build and production. You can have data connector policies. You can define which connectors can be used by which users are the part of the business. Uh, and then you can provide security when you are sharing. So to give you guys a quick understanding of it, if I go back to my Power Apps platform, and if I go to environment settings, where is it? Admin center, yep. So if I come here, the first thing is you can have settings on your environment. So if I come to the environment itself, so I have a couple of environments that I've built in my demo tenancy. So I can come here, I can go and um, click on access and then control who has access to what. So I can just go ahead and add more users, giving them admin rights to environment or user rights to that environment. So I can control who has access to. So for example, if you have a dev and production requirement, you can have a dev environment where the devs have complete access but in the production environment, those users have read-only access as everybody else in the company. So you can have environments to do that kind of flow. Then the other thing is obviously the data policies, which allows you to control the connectors. Now, when you go to Power Apps or Power Automate, it's all about connectors in that. So I've created a policy which allows me to control which connectors are used in this environment. So I can go and select, for example, I've selected two Adobe connectors, which are available um, and scope within the environment that I have set, which is obviously in this case is production, but it could be your dev. So you can have some connectors that are available in dev, not in production, because you don't want people to start using them freely. So you can control connectors policy through that, and you can manage that. Data gateways help you to connect to the you know, on-prem systems, and uh, data integration is again on the similar lines. Now, these are all, so data policies and environment access is well, the, the admin control that we have. Now saying that, when you come to the app, now if the user want to control who has access to the app and the connectors in it, the users can actually come and control that. So if I click on an app and I click, now I, as you guys can see, I cannot see detect me because I have not been shared. Uh, it is there with my uh, other user who has done it, but I cannot see it. So if I come here and if, and if I click on share, I can select who the users are, I want to give access. So for example, if I select a user, I can select what kind of access that the user has to a connector. So they can go and, and if I see here in my other scenario, if I go to that app, detect me, and if I click, click on share, I can actually set the permissions of the user. So if they are a co-owner or they are a user and which data they can see. So you can control if the user is added, they can do something with it or not. So you can have that security in your app. So you, as you guys can see, there are a lot of ways where you can control security. So it's, it's a secure collab environment. It's not just a collaboration environment for your team. So that's how you can go and build security into this um, in a smart collaboration environment. So to iterate, we looked at um, how we can do Power Platform, AI Builder, Power Agents, Power Automate to link all a startup journey experience quick and easy, um, keep business value, then you can have extensions through, uh, sorry, messaging extensions or pods, which can give you more of a, a scalable, controllable experience, and you can do more complex scenarios with that. And then finally, you can have virtual agents for a whole enterprise-wide experience. And thinking about improving and doing it smartly and building um, intelligence into it and at the same time building a secure solution. So these are some helpful resources. Now there are more than this, but I've given only a few as a starting point that you guys can start looking at. And if you're interested, you can drill down more and look at more details. You can find more information as you go through the details. I would say 
the AI builder and cognitive services are the two key ones if you guys are looking at initially and you want to start with something bot service and bot framework builder is the next level where you are actually building solutions or you are tech guy or, or if you are a you know interested power user and you want to do some tech stuff go for uh, go and there are a lot of examples around it so you can just do um, you know a lot of uh, interesting stuff so last not at the least um i would like to call out and thank all our sponsors if you guys see here um you know for organizing thing and the uh, 365 organizing committee for taking all the effort and doing this and i was glad to speak to you all today these are few of my details um, my linkedin profile and my blog uh, please feel free to connect to me at there and uh, you know that's how we can start um but Without further ado, I will just go to the Q&A. I forgot to mention that I had kept the Q&A for the last. So we have some time for Q&A. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the Q&A and I'll just answer them. Um, the first is how good is um, I'll just publish that. So one is published already. Yep. Okay, that's a QR code. Good. Um, so we'll publish that. Publish that. Uh, I'll reply them later otherwise. But how good is the AI detecting photos when you have images taken for different angles of the object? That's a good question actually. Now from my experience, what I've seen is it obviously varies based on how focused your cameras are or your information is on that camera. So if if your if if your data is out of focus, you know, because you know you are not focusing on that object, the AI will not detect it. So if you are if you are trying to focus on an object and you want that AI to detect it, make sure that it is the center point of your thing. Now you can have obviously varied scenarios where you can still show that it is still a little bit far, but a better resolution on it, still a little bit far, and you can still point to find that data, but the AI might find the data, uh, but it might get confused. And there is, a, <laughs> there is a good example, which I saw in one of the Microsoft demos where they had the guy detecting dogs, and then he finally puts his picture in it, and it comes to the dog. So there are there are no kind of hundred percent scenarios. There are always false positives and false, um, you know, sorry, uh, good negatives in one sense. But you know what you need to do is make sure that you are training in a lot of the data. So if you are having scenarios where um, you know the images are at different angles, try to train them in a lot of angles, like uh, all all like posterior, front, up, down. So try to train it at different angles. So it AI yeah, become. But that's a good point. You should you should try to do that if you're really interested in making it more 100% type. What are the licensing requirements for Power Apps AI Builder? So that's a good question. So, so the question is, what are the licensing requirements for Power Apps and AI Builder? So to look at that, let's go to the AI Builder. Now, there is obviously the Power Apps uh, plan that comes with it. So you can actually have, um, I think, a per user plan, which is $15. And then you can have per user, um, uh, plan, but maybe I'm wrong. I think it has changed. Uh, you won't be able to use from a model. So I think it is still the same plan. Okay, yes. So that's the, still the same plan. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same plan. So you can have a per user plan, which uh, gives you, I think I had it open. Oh, virtual agents. I have the virtual agents one, which is a separate licensing mechanism. But Power Apps, if I go here, per user, per app, so that one gives you, um, I don't remember if I had seen AI in it. Yeah, AI builder capacity on, so that's additional. So per app license gives you that. Uh, per user license, one second. Per user license also gives you that. So that's additional on top of it, uh, based on what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, so the thing is, it depends on what kind of plan you are trying to use. I think per app plan gives you all the functionality. Uh, I have to actually go and look at it again. Uh, and then it gives you that AI builder as part of it. Um, obviously, there are additional cost systems for that. So yeah, I will, I will look it up and I'll, I'll try to reply to the chat. Or if you can leave your details, I can come back to you on that. So yeah. Cool. Um, anything else? Okay, cool. I'll reply back to this chart to whoever has asked this question. Um, good question. Yeah, cool. So that's all from me today. I think it was really good to have you guys uh, listen to me. Um, if you have more questions, please feel to drop our uh, drop the questions here. I'll try to monitor the Q and A a little bit more. 
um or else yeah please feel to reach out on linkedin or you know um, i will keep my details up for some time um please feel to reach out on linkedin or blog or my twitter handle to ask more questions so yeah thank you